Welcome to Science at FMNH, a podcast and video series that explores the behind-the-scenes science collections and research at Chicago's Field Museum. My name is Matt von Conrad. I'm the Collections Manager in uh, Botany, in the Botany Department, specifically on a group of organisms called early land plants or bryophytes, which include liverworts, hornworts and mosses. So I divide my time between looking after and managing the collections, which we have about um, half a million specimens and I also do research. So I have a very broad range of interests, everything from the DNA level or the molecular level to variation in morphology and ecology, and then applying this knowledge to conservation and land management. But my main area of interest is systematics, which is collecting, documenting, and describing the species biodiversity around the globe. What are liverworts? Because the general public, uh, by and large, you know, they wouldn't know liverworts if they walked along and slapped them across the face. You know? And yet, liverworts can be found all around the world. In many ecosystems, this group of plants, they're really conspicuous, sort of the most dominating vegetation. Why do we study an organism like liverworts? Well, it turns out that, you know, liverworts, or these early land plants, are evolutionary, biologically, and ecologically significant. There's a growing consensus that the extant liverworts are descendants of the earliest land plants that made this transition from water to land, and something in the order of 450 million years ago. And this is the most significant event, the evolution of life, it, it totally altered the evolution of life on Earth. Without that, terrestrial ecosystems would be not what they are today. Because these guys are so small, they respond very rapidly to environmental change. Atmospheric scientists have used these organisms to assess environmental pollution. They have chemical compounds that are inside these organelles, cellular organelles called oil bodies. They exhibit all sorts of biological activity. Activity against certain cancer cell lines, even activity against HIV and AIDS. So all of these factors, that's what makes them really interesting and exciting to study. And they've just got endless application to different studies in science. So it makes them a really exciting organism. They grow on a variety of habitats. They grow on bark, over rocks, on stream beds, and over the soil as well. They're typically in areas of higher moisture or precipitation. Right now we have active field programs in Chile, New Zealand and the South Pacific. We will typically try to get to really remote areas, so it's quite fun. Sometimes with and a little bit um, nerve-wracking in New Zealand, we get helicopters into remote mountainous regions. Sometimes we just have to rough it. We'd have to walk several days into the highland areas. Collecting these plants, it's um, quite different from collecting flowering plants. Because they're small and form compact mats generally, we just have a hand lens, which we'll need to look at the microscopic features of the plant so we can now distinguish between different species or different genera. And we have small packets. Then when we get back to base camp, we would lay them all out and just dry them. What happens is when specimens arrive at the field museum, they get frozen for a certain amount of time that should kill off almost 
any bugs or insects. And then after they've been frozen, we go through a big sorting exercise and they will get deposited in the museum. Those specimens can be utilised by researchers worldwide for generations to come.